and welcome to another brand new episode of Top Big Thunder. Here from the Top Ten, I'm John Roca. And I am Matt Nose. This is a show that we do for our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash the top ten with the number ten. Uh, they send in whatever topics, ideas, questions that they have. We don't know what they are beforehand, and we just read them and answer them as they come in. Yeah. It's a shock to us as much as it is you. <laughs> um, do I start off? I think I start off this time. Yes. Go for it. Sure. Okay. Andrew Gorzinski uh, sends us, or Gorzicki, sorry about that, says, hey, guys, hope all is well. So my lady and I like to go see some stand-up whenever we get a chance. Luckily, we've gotten to see some big names. But we also enjoy discovering comics who we've never heard of before. And yes, we even went a couple of times to those drive-in shows during the pandemic. That was an experience, but I digress. A few years ago, we heard John Lovitz was coming, and I was hesitant. He makes me laugh on SNL and his small parts in movies, but I was nervous about how he would be as a stand-up. We were so pleasantly surprised. We laughed hard and consistently throughout the whole set. So a few months ago, when we saw he was returning, again, I was worried. It was the last time a fluke? Were we just in a slap-happy mood back then? Well, we went, and again, we were rolling with laughter. He definitely has risen to be one of the best we have seen. On the other hand, a few years back, we were excited to go see Tim Allen. It was his big return to stand-up at the time, and his first show back in his home state of Michigan in years. It wasn't a horrible show, but we were disappointed. We found that we maybe smiled a lot with a few laughs, but we weren't loving it. Maybe the expectations were too high. So at least to my questions, have you guys ever gone to see a comic and were very surprised that he, she topped your expectations and the opposite. Have you ever gone with high expectations and were disappointed? Sorry for the uh, book and thanks for the time, Drew. Uh, Matt, I think you're very well equipped to answer this question. Not really, though. Really? Because I don't, I don't go to see, like, I don't buy tickets to go see shows. But you've been in a room. You yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but like he was saying, like, build up the expectation, and then we were all a geek mm -hmm. to go see Tim Allen or John Lovitz or any of these other names. Right. It's more so like I'm doing a show, maybe they're on it, or they were doing the early show, and I'm doing the late, so we passed each other like ships in the night type of thing. Okay. Uh, it's it's rare occurrence. The last ticket I bought was Brian Regan. Oh, yeah. You love Brian Regan. Yeah, I do. And But yeah. before that, it had been 15 years since I bought a ticket to a comedy show. Wow. Or maybe even longer. Well, let me do the side. Well, let me adjust it to say, have you ever stayed for someone? Oh, for sure. You weren't on the bill. Like you weren't you weren't doing a set. Have you ever stayed to watch someone who were disappointed or blown away by that? Um, Can you say? That I wouldn't say I've ever been disappointed because usually like say they don't do all that well. It's like, well, they're working on. Yeah, yeah. They just did their special and they're starting from scratch. Right. All of that is now retired, and they're never going to do it again. Right. So I, the audience may not enjoy that, but I enjoy it because it's just like, okay, well, now you get to see how their mind works. Yeah, you're watching the craft. Yeah, and you days. see like, okay, the joke began here, and then if I see him again in two weeks, is it still around? And right. if it is, has it uh, morphed and evolved into and where have they taken it? Right, right, right. And to be on that journey, yeah, I, I do definitely anticipate. I like seeing new bits just see it because some guys work it out on stage some yeah, yeah. come in and it's very written out and structured and just the different preparation and style um but yeah i mean when was the last show that you were anticipating going to or i don't go to con i don't go to stand-up shows i've never gone i don't think ever to a stand-up show uh in terms of like a uh, chris rock concert or anybody like that or mar or anybody i just have never done that mm -hmm. i watch their specials you know so sure. that's my that would be my only real kind of correlative to what Drew is asking. I, I but I never, I don't think I've ever paid. I mean, I've gone to stand ups, obviously, done a few thanks to Mark Ellis letting me be on the bill a few times. Um, but I've never, uh, you know, kind of paid money to go see a show. Um, for whatever reason, okay, I just have never have done that. Um, but well, I mean, I've gone to the Laugh Factory a few times, right? But I, I was going because the the crew was going, right? It wasn't like, oh my god, we're gonna go see this person. It was more like, let's go, let's go have some fun tonight. Let's go to a stand up comedy show. Hey, that's the luxury of living in Los Angeles, though, because that right. bill still had more than likely two to five people on it that draw nationally. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Like Dane Cook, what I I didn't discover Dane Cook, but I discovered Dane Cook in my life at the Laugh Factory, right? So okay. He, yeah. No, he was. Yeah. That was his, you know, fiefdom. Yeah, yeah. And at the time, he was still kind of building. And so, oh, okay, we, wow. So we before Perfect see... Circle and all yes. that jazz. Yes, it was like not early 2000s or something like that. 
and um he was there and he he murdered dude he murdered yeah. he was so good and i think that's why i feel a sense of tragedy around him because like he didn't you know a lot of weird shit happened and i heard he was douchey and the fact that he was willing to be made fun of by louis on the show um and of course it's ironic somebody should do a show and make fun of louis on that show um you know, I thought it was ballsy of him or gutsy of him to be able to take the piss out of himself. Mm -hmm. um, but he just, you know, but when I saw him, he was fresh. He was young. He was funny. He was hungry. Oh, dude. And it was great. His Comedy Central Presents. I fucking yes. loved it. Oh, yeah. Loved it. Yeah. But yeah, I never saw him live until after he had become Dane. Oh, right. And okay. then did like a show and he was uh, at the improv and he was closing it. Yeah. And I was up like second or something. Um, I wish I could remember who else were on the bills, but we went to see him twice. Like it was just happened to work out that he was there the second time we went. But he, honestly, uh, well, funny. yeah, that was like his his face and likeness were plastered all over the exterior of the Laugh Factory. Yeah, and uh, yeah, everybody knew it. That's that's Dane's club, mm -hmm. and he does how many ever sets a week he wants to, and uh, yeah, but. I'm guessing maybe like a Jay Davis might have been on one of those shows. Maybe. I bet um, maybe Brian Callen. Maybe. Maybe Brian Callen. It's yeah. possible. He was in this Brian. roughly the same circles. Yeah. I mean, there, I'm sure I saw people uh, two or three of uh, the two or three times I went who became famous or a name or even maybe you or somebody else that I didn't know at the time. Uh, who was there? Because we stay. We I liked I liked to go to the later one and stay as late as possible because that's when you get the like either the train wreck or the brilliance. Oh yeah, and I love that. And so it's like the, I wanted to. Well, you have the same mentality as uh, Dr. Dre. <laughs> oh yeah, he's, he goes. He liked to week. come on the worst fucking nights of the week. <laughs> that was his favorite: is to watch people die or succeed in a room with when the audience has their knives out. And you're like, this isn't really fair, man. And he's like, it's great. It's like, it is. It is if you're a comic, man. This isn't cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're enjoying <laughs> it the same way we do when you watch your friend fucking just eat it. Um, no, but it's fascinating to watch people um, have the you, but either where the audience turns on them or they they lose the audience, right? For whatever sure. reason, it's it's a fascinating because I feel nothing but sympathy when someone's up there and they're losing. I, like I, I never wanted to boo a like else. They're saying like really, really off color, like Holocaust jokes or shit. But like the, uh, normally, I'm like when they're losing, I'm just like okay, find it, find it, find it. You know, I'm I'm watching it, but because uh, I'm two mindsets. I'm one finding it, and the other side of it is oh, this is fascinating. Like I'm people watching this guy try, or a girl trying to figure it out. Yeah, you know? so it's very watching very them spin out. Yeah, 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 it it hurts it. sometimes yeah. when you're watching. You're like, oh, "Fucking pull it up, man! <laughs> pull the nose of this fucking thing up!" And you watch them just sabotage themselves even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what is your brain fucking thinking? <laughs> how did you know? How did you get to there? Well, I imagine within most comics, Matt, and I'm sure you could verify this more than I can, is a self-destructive impulse. So once that button get that's that switch gets flipped. It's very hard to switch that flip off, uh, flip that switch off because you're so. That's naturally that's there, you know. This idea I, of I, feeling lesser than, you know. Yes, I would chalk it up more to. There are quite a few of them that just aren't naturally funny. They're written funny. Uh, they know how to present themselves in that form, but off the cuff in a situation where you need to be nimble on your feet, can't fucking do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen numerous people that uh, that have specials and whatnot but if the right heckler says something they will utterly melt down because it wow. just ruined the flow of their sentence and now right. they're lost and they can't get back to it and they're fucking pissed i've seen a couple people do that yeah you're like yeah. just relax throw the joke away move on yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah just hold on to it it's a battle now yeah it's like no i'm gonna finish i wrote this it's a really good joke i know audiences like it and be like it doesn't fucking matter talk about what happened in the room and then fucking move on I think the thing I hate the most when I watch some comics nowadays is because I watch it on Facebook. They post their um, sets, or five minute sets, or or, or fifteen minute sets, oh, or whatever. Goo. But, what? I said goo. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, when they comment on their own joke, I really get mad. Like, I just I, that to me screams. I, of I agree. Right. Well, the like, thing is, oh, that killed yesterday. It's like, what the fuck are you commenting there on? There are moments when that's fine. Okay. 
They're all just, just if you know the individual and they never do this, and they're oh, literally well, taking fair. it back. Yeah, okay, it's just fair. like I, I try to do the same thing too because I used to have a friend that uh, he would double over laughing at the same punchline in his joke, Oof. Uh, and he did the joke quite a bit. Yeah. And I pulled him aside and I was like, "Hey, man, if an audience comes to see you more than once, don't you think you're going to come off as disingenuous if you laugh at the exact same spot every single time?" And he's like, "No, the audience loves it." I'm like, okay, that's it's fine. Fuck you know, <laughs> well, it's party. It's part of your act at that point. But it did the big Dave Chappelle doubled over and he'd slap the mic on his thigh, and you're like, "Oh yeah." audience believes it in the moment, but if they right. see you more than once, just like yeah. there's no way you're fucking this hilarious to yourself. Do you think uh, Chappelle coordinates his laughter in certain moments? Like he stages it? Do you think he does that in certain moments for the joke? Uh, I, I don't know. That'd be a okay. good question. Because I've seen him do that. Yes. On stage, just in an intimate setting, like a small room, 60 people in there. Yeah. And that's the room holds like 70. Right. So it's a tiny little thing and seeing him crack himself up. And I've seen it, every comic uh, pretty much by and large genuinely crack themselves up on stage. Mm, fair enough. If, I, if you see someone perform enough, it's yeah. the people that die laughing at all their shit that it's just like, well, if everything's funny, nothing is funny. Yeah. 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 I've, I've got a million, like, I fucking hate it when people do this. I got a million, right. I got a long laundry list of things. Yeah. Like guys that end every other sentence with right. <laughs> so I was going to the store, right? And then we we're doing this and then. Fucking! I had to get a shopping cart, right? right. Like either make a declarative statement or fucking don't. <laughs> but don't constantly pander to the audience by making sure that they're with you on the journey every fucking step of the way. <laughs> it's annoying. Yeah, if you're interesting enough, they will follow you on yes. the journey. You don't have to check now, in with them. Yeah, there are great. exceptions to this rule. Like Bill yeah, Burr yeah. says, write a lot, but he's not asking if no, no. you're coming along with him. <laughs> That's just a tick that he has. I just, yeah. I know some, a couple friends, they're fairly successful. And one of them in particular says, write every like third sentence. Like, oh, Man, wow. that is fucking annoying as shit. <laughs> I can't believe you've never noticed this. You've put out multiple CDs. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just like, this is fucking brutal. Do I think <laughs> you're funny? Yes. Yeah. This isn't me saying you suck. And this is another reason you suck. It's just like, you're better than this. Please stop. Yeah. Yeah, I've got I've got a laundry list of those. Wow. Like, uh, I had a friend that would constantly fiddle with the mic cord. Oh yeah, I've he seen. He grabbed the bottom of it and stroke it out through the and just like it's when he was searching through to between jokes. I had another oh, friend yeah. that would tip punchlines. He had mm. a, a tick, a physical tick. Right. And it's good because psychologically you're conditioning the audience, but at the same right. time, it also if it doesn't work. Now we all know that's where you thought the funny part was, and it's up. Yeah, yeah, I got, yeah. I got a million. But the back to his original question: I haven't paid, and you haven't paid, mm. so yeah. it's a different. I'm. Uh, I will say this: I am shocked you were blown away by Lovitz twice, no less. Yeah, I, I, I love him on SNL. I don't know if I've ever seen him do a stand-up. I've seen him on the roasts, and even there, he's not on that often. And I know he had a comedy like club yep. there at universal yep. city walk i remember i was there when that was happening but i never like was motivated to go see him do stand-up mostly because i see him as a sketch guy not a stand-up guy yeah. so have you seen him do stand-up i did his opening weekend of his club with him holy shit <laughs> yeah oh, i've done a wow. bunch of shows the thing is i at least you're in la the only place i ever yeah. do shows with him didn't seem like he gave a shit oh wow like yeah. he had no problem going up and talking. It's not right. that wasn't the issue. Just like right. uh, yeah, you know, I half-assedly wrote this joke, and right, it's a different animal, I guess, when you're on the road and you have yeah, a right. bunch of people paying for it. But still, if you're not putting in the work at home, yeah, how the fuck is that going to translate on the road? Maybe he's been doing it so long that for him at home is a way to kind of take the shoes off, as opposed to like you know, yeah, his exp or his experience with Tim Allen is what I would anticipate. Yeah. I never just like that funny. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but he's coming in. He's a movie star and all that now. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, how much... and it's been a long time since he yeah. did it. I imagine that's what keeps Eddie off the stage uh, for as long. I mean, it's hey, when he was talking about in comedians' cars getting coffee, like it sounds like a fucking massive chore. 
And because people, the expectations would be through the through the sky, not through the roof, through yeah. the sky. That's like the through problem. The universe. Yeah. And if you and don't he, do well, because Raw wasn't that great. Raw starts out really well, but falls apart near the end. Um, whereas Delirious is fucking fantastic. And the first one, God, I can't remember the first one of his. I just I think it's just called Eddie Murphy. Is great. So I think it would be. I don't know, Matt. I think it would be a lot to take on to try and do stand up, even though I just don't think he'll allow himself to fail. And you mm. have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Because you're not going to be, you first off weren't the mountaintop. Ooh. Well, no, no. no. I loved him. So yeah. did you. Yes, I but did. Just as you said, when you look back at his stand up, eh. Yeah, right. Yeah, good point. Good point. It's good not point. like it's transcendent. Right, right. But he went from that to then becoming the biggest movie star in the world. So you're like, well, that thing was, it was all part of like a movement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think, yeah. I wish he would, but I understand fully why he doesn't. Because the expectation level in his mind and a lot of the fans is going to be yeah. for it to be amazing. And I don't know that it ever was. So, yeah, fair point. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, if there's any high expectations and disappointed, um, I think when Chappelle first came back uh, uh, on the specials, I wasn't that impressed with his first two okay. specials. But that, I mean, but you know, you're watching a gene. Oh, he didn't create. You know, it's like watching Da Vinci. It's like lesser of Da Vinci's paintings. It's like it's still fucking Da Vinci. You know, yeah. there's still he was there was still genius and brilliance in his observations and things and the way he was constructing the set. But I didn't think all the jokes landed, and I sensed an anger or bitterness at certain times that I just – I'm not a fan of when Chappelle lets that out. And so um, I wasn't, you know, 100% on board, but I thought the last two and, – and, yeah, I know the trans the trans stuff I could definitely move aside, but everything else I really enjoyed about his his sets. And so just, you know, for what uh, – I like it, you know. And I haven't seen the new Ricky Gervais one uh, yet, um, but it's on our to-do list for sure. And um, – mm. And I thought the last Pat Oswalt one was fucking fantastic. Uh, and I'm not always the biggest fan of him as a stand-up, so to speak. So. Yeah, yeah, he's got a particular style. Yes, yes. Which uh, most stand-ups, the, the individuals that uh, appeal across the board don't really work for me because it's just so middle of the road. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'd rather have something that is exceedingly distinct. Yeah. Like, I do this and I do this well. Great, I will watch that. Yeah, uh, like, you're whereas, like, yeah, you're right. Like, God forgive me, but I, I watched the Hannah Glad. I didn't. I did not. I don't. I. I don't I even consider that comedy. It's like I didn't laugh once, dude. I it's an like, hour lecture. Yeah, and I don't. Yeah. How, why that's considered stand up? I don't know. And look, you have every right. And I, again, she's got every right to be up on that stage. It just yeah, worked for me. You know? Yeah, and the the audience that loves her and all that jazz, great. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad you guys have you know Absolutely. something you enjoy. Did I laugh once? Not not at once. Like literally, and it's I didn't go into it with a defeatist. I right. would rather be entertained than not. I don't want to sit there for an hour and not enjoy myself. Right. What's the fucking point of that? Yeah. Um, yeah. There's two. There's two on Amazon Prime. Two female Australian comedians who I really loved, Celia Pakula and Ann Edmonds. Both their sets. If you guys haven't watched them, I think they're from 2020. Those of you listening, they are fantastic, and I loved them. Uh, and they were, you know, able to hit the kind of points of the things that women endure. Mm -hmm. but also find the funny in all of it. And I thought it was r r both really well-constructed sets, you know? And so there's a bunch of, but Jimmy Yang, I did not, I you know I laughed maybe three times in Jimmy's. Oh, Yang's special. Yeah. Oh, Yang special. I've known Oh, Yang for a long time. I didn't die. I didn't dial fully into it, but I think he's a funny guy. I like him on all this. Like he, he was great in space force. And I, I I'm, I'm sad that show got canceled. Because I liked him in it, and obviously in Silicon Valley, but his stand-up didn't 100% uh, work for me for whatever reason. But, you know, I hope she's a funny guy. So just I guess it just all depends, you know. Do you think Rogan does stand-up? Does Rogan do stand-up? Do you think Rogan does stand-up? Are you know. fucking joking right now? <laughs> yes, Rogan does stand-up. I've never seen him do stand-up. That's why I uh, I've seen I've seen Rogan do stand-up. Okay. Yes, yes, Rogan does stand-up. <laughs> it's an interesting... He's got specials out. You can easily find them. He's got Shut albums. Up. No way. Fuck Rogan yeah. has a special? Oh, he's got numerous. What? How come I've never seen him on stage? Jesus Christ. I can't be right. Really? Oh, 100%.
Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll have to go find his stand up then. I've, I've never seen him do stand up. <laughs> I love it. He's a <laughs> comedian. And you're like, does he do? Well, you know, because there's sketch and there's stand up, and not always sketch, not all sketch people. What was he sketch? He did talk radio, but that was. <clears throat> well, I know him as an actor, as a funny actor. I never, like, from Freaks and Geeks and then into the movies, I never knew him as a stand up comedian. So that's that's why I asked the question. Yeah, yeah I'll give you that. Most people. Yeah. Probably before he did, like even during Fear Factor, most of them mm. didn't know that he was probably a comic. Oh, Rogan, uh, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, I knew he was a stand-up before news radio. I remember that. Uh, but for whatever reason, with Rogan, it just didn't didn't cross over. Um, anyway, we're 21 minutes. Uh, who, who did you say? Uh, Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's yeah. what I thought. And then you said, yeah. oh, yeah, I knew he was a stand-up before oh, news, news radio. radio. Right, news radio. Because he was on news radio, Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or I said talk radio. I'm sorry. News radio. Right, right, right. Talk. Oh, uh, Bogosian is talk radio. That's yeah. a great film but and play. Um, all right. We should do one more before we get out of here. Do you want to take it? Matthew Hasso, do you want to read it? Uh, thank you, Andrew. And I'm, Yes, thank uh, you, Andrew. <laughs> I'm glad you liked Love It's unfortunate about the, you know, uh, Tim Allen, but you never know. Could have had just a bad night. Yeah. And plus, he was coming back after all that time. Yeah. Probably still working out the timing. It's not easy. Um, so this comes from Matthew Hasso who says, Hey guys, as requested, I will keep submitting my super sweaty questions along with a different question, just to make sure you guys don't double up on comic book talk. Number one, someone asked you to be the Kevin Feige of their new film pr franchise based on a comic book universe that is yet to be done. What comic book universe do you go with? Um, that hasn't been done. Uh, I don't know. Moon Knight came out already. We've got a new League of Extraordinary Gentlemen coming out, which is going to be great. Yes, nope. Sandman's coming. Sandman's coming. Um, Watchmen's already been done. DC, Marvel, maybe the Image comics, maybe Savage Dragon, maybe Stormwatch. Uh, Gen 13, I think they did try to make a Gen 13. didn't quite work out. Um, so yeah, maybe the Image stuff, like the Max and... Was the Max uh, the purple and yellow thing? Like yes. the big teeth like? Yeah. Max yeah, I never read awesome. it, but that thing was, well, it sticks in your brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what else? Uh, th well, Thunder, Wildcats. Wildcats. I think Wildcats is, was really cool run on Image. Um, Death Blow was awesome on Image. So there was a, there's a, there's a number of Image stuff I think that I would, if I was going to do that, a universe, I would go that. Because I also think the expectations are so low that you could have more freedom to create what you wanted to create. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, guess that's what true. I would go to that direction yeah i don't have uh, everything that i read as a kid has been turned into a movie pretty mm -hmm. much mm -hmm. fair enough uh, okay so i yeah i didn't read any of the image or any of uh the off brand a it didn't exist when mm. i was a kid watching and by the time it came around i'd stopped reading comic books so yeah, yeah. uh yeah i unfortunately I don't have a good answer for you on that one but John came up with a good one. So there's one. <laughs> okay. What's um, the next question? His next question is, is there a cartoon series that you would like to see turned into a live action franchise? Ooh. I'm with Roka and that I thoroughly enjoy some of the Transformers movies. Given that level of live action translation, what cartoon <laughs> series would you go with? Mm. Thanks for answering my questions. I'll let Matthew. You, you, you answer this one first since I answered the last one first. That's not how this works, man. I'm reading them. You answer them. And then I answer after you're done answering. Answer that's because uh, I don't have the image comics. So, yeah, but just, or any of that, like Todd McFarlane stuff, they've already turned Spawn into a, a show. Oh, God. Yeah, they did. Oof. Oh, the show was good. Sorry, the movie was not so good. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, just because you're king of that universe doesn't mean it necessarily has to be a movie. You yeah, know, true, true. Technically, the first thing I thought of was Constantine that you could bring in like Swamp Thing and all that stuff and do. It's own little uh, dark universe side thing. But uh, anyway. Okay. Cartoon series. Uh, I guess my default is always uh, Thundercats. That is always my default. We've never seen a live Thundercats. I think that would be awesome. Um, and if you could get away with being able to convert the characters to like a more modern approach to, that would work live action, I think that would be awesome. Um, so Thundercats is where I always default when it comes to something like that. Um, I, I like He-Man, but I, you know, I, I don't know if I necessarily want to see that live action. 
Um, especially because that film was so not good. Um, but yeah, Thundercats would be a choice. And then my other one would be um, Family Guy. I would love to see a live action Family Guy. I don't know how you do it. I, yeah, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> but a, a live action Stewie shooting his mouth off all the time. A live action uh, uh, what's it? What's the name of the dog? Dave. What's his name? Oh, uh, oh, uh, Brian. Brian. Yes, a live action Brian. Uh, would be hilarious. Um, so, yeah, I think that would be a lot of fun to see. And there's no way uh, What's-His-Face doesn't come back and play um, the dude in the wheelchair. Uh, oh, sure. Uh, Paul Warburton. Uh, there's Warburton. no way he doesn't come back and play that character. So, yeah, so I think there's a – that would be a lot of fun to see them try to do um, Family Guy in live action. Uh... Take it away, Nost. Well, now that we have Rescue Rangers, I want Darkwing Duck. <laughs> because I think you could have a full series of Darkwing Duck movies. That's a great point. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. got a, a big villain. Well, you still make them for kids. Sure, sure, sure. But sure. it's something that the audience, you know, adults could enjoy on top of and then has the right amount of stakes. Yeah. And then, boom, we've got three, four, five potential uh, movies Yeah, right there, done and done. I think that that could translate pretty easily. Because a lot of the stuff the, from when I was a kid, they've already made with Transformers and He Man. Yeah. Um, fucking, I think Mask would be pretty terrible. Oh, the Mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, Mask. The so mask. like there was a, a a tractor trailer. Another dude had a motorcycle that turned into a helicopter, but oh they put masks God, on. Not right. Yeah. So like, Ooh. it's a cool idea. I don't know how that translates to a live action. How that even remotely makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of cartoons that I watched as a kid mm -hmm. um, that may or may not translate because they've tried with Turtles. Yeah. No. G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe. No, it's, those are terrible. Yeah, they are horrible films. Um, and I just don't want to see. I'd rather see something else than, Yeah. hey, let's try and do this again. Like, let's Let's not. Yeah, I know people defend uh, what uh, Jam and the Holograms. That that was uh, that was it? No, no. What's what's the one with uh, Rachel Lee Cook? I forget what the name of that one was. That's not Jim in the. Is it Jim and the Holograms? Or is that Josie and the Pussycats? Josie and the Pussycats. That's it. Yeah, I, 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 I know some people try to defend that movie. That is not a good movie. Uh, it's really not. And they're all trying to talk about it, the subversive nature of that film. You know, you know how you say you want to put a kibosh on people who say right all the time. I like to put a kibosh on the people who try to tell you that a terrible film is good. And that somehow you're not getting it. When you get it, it's just not done well. It's not executed well. Mm -hmm. And seeing all these websites living off, um, you know, takes on, oh, this movie wasn't as bad as you thought. Like seeing all these people defend Spider-Man 3 after No Way Home came out, I was going out of my mind, you know, like that kind of stuff. And I get it with the prequels. I get the, you know, you were a kid when you grew up with the prequels and you love the prequels. And at Star Wars Celebration, they were celebrating uh, Attack of the Clones. But a lot of those, a lot of long stretches of those movies are not good. And so people just, you know, you're in nostalgia. It's what you're judging. You weren't a film critic at five years old. So you're judging from nostalgia or eight yeah. years old, whenever you saw it. So I respect that. But, you know, it's okay to say certain films are not good. They're, they're you know, I saw people trying to defend Ishtar the other day. Uh, and I'm just like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all, man? Like, it's okay to not have good films. Like, it's, okay to say something is universally not fucking good um it's mind-blowing to me because they're the same people that turn around and go morbius sucked and it's like well so let me see if i got this right you got a freelance paycheck for writing about a movie that's terrible and you defending it but you're going to turn right around and and go and bash another film which maybe you know, five years from now some other writer is going to take a freelance paycheck to write how good morbius was so it's just fascinating to see this kind of cycle in the sphere that i'm in that it just drives me insane some films are not fucking good, and they're just not fucking good. I don't care that you think they're good. They're not fucking good. I love Hudson Hawk. I know it's not a fucking good movie. I love the Transformers films. I know they're not fucking Citizen Kane. They're just fun, throwaway, mind, uh, mind, uh, shutting down the mind movies. They're fun for me. But I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you 500 words why it's actually a, a commentary on the government cover, uh, you know, cover up and the shadow government in the United States. And you know, it's getting nonsense that people try to do. With some of these movies, I just find it fascinating, man. Anyway, there's my rant. I'm sorry I'm stepping off the podcast. It's all right. 
I had to get that out. Of me. Apparently. I saw someone tweet from celebration and like after talking to two people that we know who are, Oh yes. I know this. They're like, going to say, yeah. They're like, I'm, you know, starting to reassess. What was it? Last Jedi. It was Rise our last Jedi. Skywalker. Rise, Rise of Skywalker. Skywalker. It was one of the two. And they're yeah. like, might have to rewatch that. And I don't know who liked it because it ended up on my timeline. Cause I don't follow the individual and my interactions with them have been nothing but pleasant. Yes. But I was like, Oh, so you were at the Kool-Aid festival and suddenly <laughs> you're like, you know what? This Kool-Aid doesn't taste so bad. Like, no shit. No shit. I had the fucking cultists talking to me for 72 hours and suddenly this cult doesn't look so bad. Ah, shocking. Shocking. <laughs> it's like you can't listen to the two people that are going to defend this to the death. You know, this ginger cranberry Kool-Aid isn't as bad as I thought. <laughs> yeah. And that's coming from the cranberry salesman. Oh, you know what you should put? Is that cranberries in that. Okay, man. Okay. Not everything needs cranberries. Ugh. <laughs> And I, I, I yeah. fans of the two individual that uh, that were pouring honey in his ear. I have zero problem with them. Yeah. They're both great guys. And me too. Me too. Uh, but upon reading that, I was like, "Fucking, you got to be kidding me!" But I also think that's, that's Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> yeah, because I also know the person we're referencing is a very nice guy, and he's not a confrontational man. At okay, all. I've never. I don't know that I've met him in person. But oh, the interactions oh. we've had online, he's been nothing but nice and cordial. I had a great 20 minute conversation with him uh, on at the Marriott on Friday night. We had a really okay. great conversation. I hadn't caught up with him in a long time in person. And it was so much fun because he's such a nice energy. And so, um, yes, I know exactly. When I saw the yeah. same tweet, I was like, oh, my God. Exactly. It's like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Well, <laughs> And if you're listening, we love you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got zero problem with you or the other people. In it. yeah, it's yeah. just you're surrounded completely yeah. and immersed in a world that is meant to do nothing but then celebrate all the positives of yeah. this, yeah. never acknowledging the negatives. Yeah. And be like, well, I got some real fucking negatives, but that's not the place for it here. <laughs> it's like basically when you, you know, you go to Disney World or anywhere else and you buy the goofy hat and you wear it, you wear it at Disney. Right. You know what I mean? You don't right. bring that to your regular life because it's okay here. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a fine opinion to have in the world of everything here is amazing. <laughs> Get back in the real world. Let's talk. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. There we go. I think we should wrap it up there. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Matt Hasso, for those questions. Wait, did you answer uh, which one you'd want? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Darkwing Duck was my choice. Yeah, Darkwing Duck, that's right. All right. Well, thank you, Hasso, uh, for your question. And thanks as well to uh, Andrew uh, or Drew for his question as well. This was fun, a fun uh, um, topic, Thunder. Uh, but let's get on out of here, Matt. What do we have to tell him? Uh, if you want to, follow the show at Top 10 Show on Twitter, all spelled out. Otherwise, Instagram, YouTube is forward slash the Top 10 Podcast with the number 10. So please hit us up over there. And you can follow me anywhere at Matt Nost. And you can follow me at The Roca Says, and we'll talk to you next time with another brand new episode of Topic Thunder. Thunder.